So uh, we've got Lex Divine, not not Ryan. I shouldn't call you Ryan, or should I call you Lex now? I mean, this is sort of a kayfabe breaking podcast, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're sitting next to each other on a couch, and in kayfabe. Uh, the most interaction we've ever had is him reading bullying tweets to me in front of a crowd. Uh, uh -huh. okay. So we well, don't, we're not together and are not, like, living together in different so. Right, in, 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 in the wrestling world. That's okay. So I'm supposed to be Italian, so, you know, and, and, and I'll have spaghetti tonight, but that's about the only thing about me that's, that's, that's actually Italian. Don't tell... Uh, uh, Monty from Monty and the Pharaoh. He gets so upset at that. For some reason, Monty from Monty and the Pharaoh thinks that like my pretending that I was Italian is like the most offensive thing that's ever happened in the history of wrestling. And us to so we have questions from fans, mm -hmm. and I'm here to answer them. And uh, just I, I may blather on and on and on, but I will get to a point eventually with your help. Like so, in what? my introductions, I will get to a point eventually. And here is the first point I'm going to get to a question. Or actually, it's more of a statement slash question. And it says, please ask Dutch. Dutch, do you know who up in New York is talking about you? Uh, yes. There's, there's two answers to that, really. Mm -hmm. One of them, you say, who? And they said, nobody. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Are we good on sound? Yep. Are you okay to go? Yeah. Growing up adopted, knowing I'm adopted, the one and only thing that I've always tried to do, make my mom and dad proud of me. We had a friend, he, his son played hockey. He says maybe that would be a good sport for him to get, Mike to get into. Played them all, except goalie. He said he was too big. Yeah, he covered the whole net. <laughs> He had 33 inch thighs. This was as an eighth grader. He had 19 inch calves. He had a size 16 and a half neck. It was just, it was just like a solid piece of work, granite. I've known Mike, to be honest, really too fucking long. <laughs> he hit you with the arms and you just, uh, it's like taking it to the body, shiver. He got into the normal scrapes like all, all kids do. He was a bully, and uh, any time he didn't get his way, you know, he would he would try to, or he would, he wouldn't try, he would, um... he bully you. 25, 26 years old, man, I was, you know, on top of the world. I was like, oh my God, I just, you know, I'm wrestling, you know, for the WWF. They decided they wanted to give me a character, half man, half beast, and they wanted to put this big giant bullhead on me. Vince probably spent $100,000 on this fucking bullhead that I only wore like five, six times. I grabbed Vince by the arms and I'm talking to him through the mouth of this bullhead. And I said, Vince, I got this. I said, don't worry about it. I had a good friend of mine die in the ring in my arms in Bremen, Germany in 1993, Larry Cameron. He had a heart attack in the middle of the ring and I watched this guy of black color turned to an ash gray. I bought a ring and fixed it up and opened up my company, had a few shows, and then that's when I found out that C6 was touching my spinal cord and uh, my career was over. For those of you who don't know what CTE syndrome is, it's a chronic traumatic encephalopathy which stands for uh, one too many concussions.
right, welcome back to the world's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro. Only seen here out of Indie Music TV. At the board is our producer, A.B., how are you, bud? I'm doing good. How you doing? All right, you recover off of uh, last week's interview, my friend? I think I did. I How's your chubby? <laughs> you <laughs> that, love that fact, That huh? caught me by surprise. It, your chubby caught you by surprise or the comment? The, the comment. The, oh, the okay. news about my chubby caught me by surprise. <laughs> what did you What did you think about our guest, Terry Reynolds, Abe? Uh, being she, a younger man so and her being an older woman, what were your thoughts? Um, well, I think she's beautiful, and I thought she was a great guest overall. You know, she was super fun and, you know, interesting and actually engaged and shit, you know, mm. so it was cool. But we'll, we'll talk about that later mm -hmm. on in the show. Um, if you saw any intro, uh, you know, Dutch Mantel, not yeah. a fan. We knew that. Too bad. It's the breaks, Yosemite. And if we're nobody, what are you doing talking about us? You know who we were. <laughs> That's, that's, that's I find it. it funny, too, that just because Brit, the Brit boy got mad because he didn't get tea and crump, 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 uh, crumpets for breakfast, he got mad and, and, and before you know, decided and to throw us out there, but that's okay. As that's, me and uh, Jimmy and are pre prep, prepping for the, 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 yeah. the main show, mm -hmm. we find out our, our boy Johnny Photo is on Hannibal at 9 o'clock. Well, that's just further <laughs> proof that Hannibal watches us, because how else would he know to pluck a guy we went to school with? So everyone's obsessed with us. And continue to pretend we don't exist while you watch every single episode. And not only Thank that, you. it's like the kid in England. I don't watch any of yours, by the way. Gold dust is the main subject. <laughs> so he goes like, right. hey, y'all, let's right. just join right. in. Gee, I wonder what we're doing this week so we can uh, jump on it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I still don't watch your programs, believe uh, it or today not. Today it's so. 7 o'clock. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, first showing of the Mighty Man Tour. Took wow. place. Okay. Um, okay. All proceeds go to Mike and his family. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and uh, it's in Santa Monica, California. Right. Unfortunately, we're doing our show, so it's at seven o'clock Eastern time, mm -hmm. uh, w uh, West Coast time. So. Right. I guess it hasn't started yet, right? Right. Right. That would be ten o'clock um, our time, I think. Right. So again, any purchases or tickets. If you live in the West Coast, uh, you can go to 100 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1753, Santa Monica, California, mm -hmm. 90401. All proceeds will go to the Mike Mantar or Mike Halux um, family. Um, it was good to see Mike. It's almost like he was still here, right? It's still haunting to me. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I've really digested it. You know, it's so funny I forgot because every time I spoke to Mike, the, uh, you know, you drop f bombs like that crazy. He mm -hmm. makes you look like an amateur. I mean, right. every you know, right. And Barry Horowitz is the all time f bomb king of cable edits. Just to make I throw that in. Was Mike Mantor loquacious? Why are you doing this with this with, with this uh, word? It's my new word. It's your new word. It's my new. Yeah. Word. Well, I still don't know what it means. So you know, well, Abe, you gave the definition. Do you even remember what loquacious means? There you go. So there it is. It means to talk a lot. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Delta flight forced to make an early landing after passenger had diarrhea all the way through the plane. <laughs> that, that Having left and landed. <laughs> what a shitty <laughs> situation. What a shitty situation. Having wow. left and landed, the flight had barely <laughs> been in the air two hours when an unnamed passenger, he better be unnamed. Oh, White Castle. <laughs> suffered what from a rather <laughs> explosive bowel movement. I would say. It was so bad that the Airbus A350 aircraft was forced to turn back. <laughs> You know, that's a real combustible situation, you know. It was going to Barcelona, by the way. Was it? Yeah. Okay. With the pilot explaining to air traffic control how the heavens had opened in September 1st. <laughs> Even more embarrassingly for the, the unnamed opened, passenger, though, right? he would have never known about the issue had it not been for the internet user who uploaded the oh recording of the God. conversation the on Twitter. I can't even have a bowel movement with someone putting it on the internet. In a brief exchange, oh. you can hear the Delta pilot explaining that they'd make an emergency landing back in Atlanta. <laughs> This is a biohazard issue. A biohazard. He tells the air traffic control, adding, we've had a passengers who's had diarrhea all the way through the airplane, so we want us to come back to Atlanta. The way through the airplane. What, first class? <laughs> second class? <laughs> might as well go for third class. <laughs> what did he do, pull his pants down? Uh, apparently, it just might have gone right through the socks, through the shoes. Oh, my God, bro. I mean, cry me a river has a whole new meaning. Oh, this is horrible. Dude. It's crazy, dude. It's it's, it's, it's crazy. It's really bad. Now, I would love to know what this this person ate. 
Did they d- define it as a male, a female, or a beast somewhere in between? This is all the information I have, this Mr. Is, Farrow. Is, uh, I think it's too much information to begin with. And what about not being able to have a bowel movement without the whole world finding out about Jay this? Jay Will says brown ice instead of blue ice. Got to do a little nice. roll call, guys. Brown ice. Very little nice. little roll call here. All right. Who do we uh, have? Chris Lee, who has made his return. Great oh, to see you back, what's up, Chris. Oh, mate? Jason. Back in the Jake? house. How are you, buddy? Uh, the First Lady of Wrestling, Maria uh, Davis, buddy, uh, is here. Hello, hello. Uh, R.J. Hudson, good hey, to RJ, see you. R.J., what's going on? Phil DeCessor. Mr. Phil. By the way, Phil, I meant to tell you, on the last show with the psychic that you hooked us up with, mm. um, he gave us the pick four number. And what happened, Jimmy? You hit it. Uh, that's right. What was that with to the tune of what? $3,000. Jeez, man. It came box, bad. but I'll take it. Not bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thanks to... The real deal. The real deal. Yeah, he's real deal. Yeah. Jay Will in the house. ESO, how are you, buddy? Jay ESO, Will, ESO working what's up? on the Monty and the Pharaoh new intro. Are okay. you ready for that, Jimmy? It all depends. Do I get to see it, or do you throw it at me live on television? Um, it's not. It, I, I don't even say it's close to being finished, but the characters are made. It's cartoon. Oh, he sent me a couple of slides. Oh, so of then that. you do. Then you. No, do I that. just saw a very small glimpse of it, but it looked pretty cool, for sure. So, will be a cartoon, which awesome. will be fun. Which you, which I you already was like, a cartoon before I've become a cartoon. Which you already like. Yeah. Steve Kotenberg in the house. Steve. What's up, Steve? Honor, as What's usual. Happening? Good to see you. Uh, what do we got here, Jimmy? Jimmy, this is what we got. Two students stabbed at a Florida high school in a community cleaning up. Uh, Hurricane Adalia? Yeah. All right. Uh, two high school students were stabbed on a countryside high school in Clearwater, Florida. Clearwater. All right. Where you were trancing around with me a couple of months ago. Whoops. No, I wasn't. Did I say that? No, you no, weren't. I wasn't. Oops. The incident occurred around 11.20 a.m. <laughs> so local ridiculous. time. ridiculous. Police said, and the suspect was taken into custody, police said, assisting with the school <laughs> dismissal of the afternoon because parts of the school remain at a crime scene. The area oh. was dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Adela. It was Adela, whatever the fuck it, it is. Adela. In which many streets. I think. Remain underwater. There is storm debris, police, blah, 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 and someone got stabbed. That's great. Nothing. And then I'm going to go to Florida and help improve the uh, the situation there over there. Go. Jimmy, uh, by the way, for everybody out there, Jimmy, uh, when's your last day in New York, buddy? Probably the weekend of September 24th. So Jimmy will go to Florida, so I'll be solo for a bit until Jimmy gets hooked up down there, and we'll try to... Do the internet thing and see how that works yep. out. Uh, yep. You know, yep. Jimmy's going to try to start a new life. I'm not going to try. I'm going to. There's a difference. Well, you got to try. Know. Yeah. Hopefully it works. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep. With Looking your, forward with, to it with, with the Karen. Misses, yeah. Absolutely. With in Karen, Panama right? City Beach. Uh, R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Adnan Al Casey, dead at 84, former WWE star, passes away as a. I don't really ever consider him a WWE star, but this is the way right. it's written in the news. Yeah, I got you. Mourns for such heartbreak, the professional wrestling powerhouse announced. Um, one thing I didn't know about the uh, Sheik right. is that, <laughs> again, because I don't know shit, um, maybe he just didn't catch it at the right time back then. He the day. was Billy White Wolf. Right. That's how I remember him. Like everything that happened after that, I. Billy White Wolf was a very, very early impressionable memory of mine from the 70s because I do believe uh, Valentine broke uh, Billy's leg, I do believe. Right. And Strongbow had an issue with that. And that's the very earliest, some of my very earliest memories. So to me, it was always Billy White Wolf. And then I saw him, I says, what's he doing with that thing on his head? Oh, he's a chic Adnan El Cassie now. Huh. That's interesting. But you recognized him. Yeah, I did. I actually did, which is weird. I probably shouldn't have as a young tyke. I shouldn't have... Uh, Recognized him, but it did. You know, what'd you think of him? He, he was cool, right? Um, as yeah, Adnan right. he was a bit of a bit of a jack off. That was his whole deal. He was supposed to be hated, and I think he passed the test. You know, he did that well, and he was eighty four years old, so he gets a B plus, right? That's really good. Yeah, to make Maria Davis. Uh, Phil says, "Congrats, Farrell." Thank you, Phil. Appreciate Maria that Davis very says, much. "Much success." Thank you, Jimmy. Maria. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I can't wait. Uh, She's a very special lady. Ibzan says, lucky. much success. Thank you. R.J. Husson, wish you the best, Farrah. Thanks, R.J. I appreciate it, guys. I really do. Mitch Seinfeld in the house. What's Benny up, Scala Mitch? Benny with Dan and Benny in the ring is in the house. Benny! We had a great interview with Brittany Brown, Hello, Benny. I think her name was. Okay. Um, good interview. I Always was check to out listen Benny to it at work. Dan and Benny stuff. Good stuff, man. Yep. Good stuff. Benny's a great guy. Uh, what do we got here? Legendary Dire States Straits guitarist last week, oh. Jack Sony, died at 68. Uh... 
thoughts on that? Jimmy. Did you put legendary, by the way, or was this to like like lifted off of something else? And that's fine if I you did. I put legendary. Okay, uh, let me really clear this up, and this is no diss on, on Jack Sonny. He, uh, he's not a legendary Dire Straits guitarist. He played on one track on Brothers in Arms in 1985. Mark Knopfler is legend. But, uh, you know, I'm sorry he passed away, and uh, he was only 68 years old, but uh, I really don't have much more to offer about him. I know he was a session kind of guy. And uh, that's about it. That's really all I can offer up. When I saw Dire Straits, I thought to myself, Knopfler? And, and then I saw him, and I started to look up. I was like, why, don't, why is he not ringing a bell to me? And then I realized why, because he basically did like one track on the Money for Nothing album. The most important album they had. Right, but he didn't do the leads or anything like that. He didn't. You know, <laughs> he did one song. He was on one the song. Most important album they had. That, yeah, that's yeah, all that's, I can say about that's, that. That's true. Sultans of Swing was better than that album. Anyway, at least that time period was. I don't know if they made that kind of money, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, guys sure, dead, Sultans right? of Swing has done pretty good over the years. It's all right. It's all right. Money for nothing. I'd rather listen to Sultans of Swing a that's thousand you. times. But that's you. But right. I would, I would say if we looked up grossing money. Well, hey, Rihanna is better than the Beatles, right, Mike? It's according to the computer. Well, the computer, <laughs> what can I tell the you? The computer's high as fuck. Anyway, <laughs> Listen, next. You next. can't fudge the numbers, my friend. You can't? You cannot really, fudge the bro, numbers. Really, bro, you can't fudge the numbers. Well, those numbers you can fudge, <laughs> but not those numbers. Again, you know, listen. That's great. Listen, all I know is what they say. Right, I get you. Terry Who Reynolds was guy. in last week. What did you think of Terry? Very, very cool. Great interview. Uh, boy, I love the attention that the show's gotten from it. How can I not love that? Can't fudge those numbers, right, buddy? Cannot fudge those numbers. Yeah, a, a very engaging guest, and uh, obviously the uh, audience uh, and our family out there at home loved it. So that's a thumbs up. A thumbs up. What would you think of her? Um, I really, really liked her. Mm -hmm. So I, I picked her up from her hotel. And, uh, you know, I got, to, you know, we you guys had it. sushi. We had a little sushi. Somehow together. his hands got salty. Right. He didn't have sushi. His but hands I, got I, salty. I really found her to be um, just like a good person. She seemed like a really good person to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, she's mm -hmm. got a grandchild. And, okay. Uh, you know, she just, you know, <sighs> I want to say this the right way. Like, out with it. So. Come on. We don't know her. We meet her. She's yeah. really cool uh, and everything I, I else. Met her for one day. And then, you know, again, just like the, the people that watch the show and, mm -hmm. and, and comment, and there were a lot of comments, mm -hmm. mostly positive. Mostly. But you had a lot of people talking about, you know, that she was a, a whore and, you know, she screwed all these guys and right. she screwed New Jack. And right. if you ever listen, go watch the New Jack and do it. Now, we had New Jack on. Yeah. And I had forgotten what we had talked about, even though we had a clip. Right. So I went back to our clip first. Mm -hmm. And he basically said nothing. Right. It was basically like, what did she come in a pajama? Because the funny thing is, he does say that he went there mm -hmm. when they met. Right. And she had her pajamas She on. likes pajamas. Okay. Apparently. So, but he doesn't really go into it. But right. then other people like, check out this, check out that. Okay. And I'm watching all this stuff, and this dude is shredding her. Okay. Shredding her. I haven't seen these things, but okay. Um, How'd that make you feel now that you've met her? Why don't we go there? Jason Moaning says Terry was fun and engaging. Absolutely. Yeah. How did I feel? Good guess. This is what I felt. No doubt. I felt she got in a relationship with New Jack, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I felt that. I felt that New Jack was not lying. Right. In what he was saying. Okay. Um, but I felt like. Why should you, like, I don't know what happened between their breakup, right? They were, according to New Jack, they were together for a year and a half. At no point in the many conversations I had with her did I ask her about New Jack. Right. In fact, on the show, she, didn't she want said to talk about she didn't him. really want to talk about Right. Him. But she clearly says that she fucked up in her life. Right. Like, she didn't want to get out of her room. Right. Because he, you know, so what I'm assuming is that New Jack was revealing stuff about her that was probably true. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, like, mm. what do we have to gain? Like, if she likes something in the bedroom, for example. Okay. 
Why would you humiliate her like? Like I had never seen these videos. I dude. think you know but me then by I started, now. But no, I, started I would never watching. do anything like that. No, never. It's, and there is nothing to gain other than making, uh, unless you just want to show off your machismo or whatever the hell, whatever way you pronounce that stupid word, and be a show off about. I mean, you know, what were you upset I'm, that you broke? She broke up with you. Uh, that's what do I. Do you see. think he was? I don't know why you would because react he would never tip his hand if he was upset about anything that would possibly hurt his well, heart. The, the, the thing is, I he thought, wasn't that kind of guy. I thought to myself, like you, know, you always liked know. him, so I hold you in high regard. So I was like, yeah, yeah New Jackson. Okay. I liked him from what I knew of him. The same way you like Terry from what we know of her. Right. Do we really know these no, people? No, we don't. Let's we don't. be real. But I do. Think, we don't know these I people. I do think that. Um, yeah. I'm a pretty good judge of character. Okay. One of my strengths as a leader in my profession and in life okay. is I can judge bullshit pretty quickly and fakes and assholes. And if you can't, then I come in and, and, and well, you'll, poke you for you'll about... you'll try to poke me a bit. I'll be like, yo, 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 yo. But, well, that's okay. And what goes vice versa. Right, You know, exactly. it is what it is. But overall, I, I'm... I, I hold my. If I was a football team, I'd be winning the division. Oh, I would think decision. so. Why are you not coaching our beloved Jets? Well, let's not get into that. Yeah, no Jet not. talk. Okay, right. Fine. We're a week away. That's fine. Um, Aaron Rodgers, baby. Okay, I'm good. But I felt for her when I was listening to these videos because, for the short time we knew her, yeah, the things he was saying, I could tell were true. Okay. There were a few th triggers that he okay. mentioned that you can that, see where uh, well that I actually saw. Right, right. You follow okay. me? And yes, I'm not talking about yes, sexual yes. stuff. No, 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 no. I'm talking I got about you. right personality traits. Pers yeah. Personality traits. I, I understand. Right, I understand. So I'm like, all right, and I'm like, I felt like I felt her pain. Mm. I felt her mm. pain. Interesting. It was. Uh, it was. <laughs> I haven't seen what you saw, so I guess I I should be looking at this. Well, stuff if you do, it. look at it. Um, yeah. Benny says she seemed really comfortable with you guys. And she very was. down to earth she was. She was very comfortable with us. But we do that for our guests normally. True or false? We try to, you know, have them relaxed and relaxed. Jay Will says Bruce Coslett should still be coaching the Jets. Bruce Coslett was that. effing oh horrible. God, what are please. you doing that to me for, Jay Will? What are you doing? Oh, God. Why don't we just get co-tied in here while we're Matthew at Matthew Holland says New Jack passed away eight days after being on Uncle Dan's show. Oh, did he? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uncle Dan. So one thing, I was talking to the guys from Intuitive today, mm -hmm. um, and they were talking to me about the show. Mm -hmm. And I asked them what they thought about the interview, because I will tell you that, guys, I felt the Terry Runnels interview was one of our finest interviews. We've had many, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. But that one, I... I well, I, the views are saying so, and all the comments not, are it, saying it, so, it, and, and the dirt sheets are saying so, too, so... I Look, we're, we've been on plenty of dirt sheets. That's all good in my book. Here's what made me like it. Right. I laughed a lot. When I laugh a lot, it, was it makes me feel happy. It was pretty funny. Right? It's nothing worse it than having a bad show. I also like, like the uh, fact that know. she was just very relaxed and, and right. being herself, you know, and that's good. So you, want, you want them to I be I asked themselves. the guys what was the feedback from Intuitive, mm -hmm. and they said uh, at first mm -hmm. they thought that um, she took away from your character. She was kind of... I have a character? Well, that's what they, tell you what they said. Okay. Right. I didn't they think said I had they, any character. They said they felt that she was like out, <laughs> like uh, like taking the shine off the Farrow character. Yeah. But okay. she recovered, recovered, and things got better. This is their opinion. Okay. They also thought she was disrespectful to you, Abe. They felt that they she made she thought it made you feel uncomfortable. Wow. Are you as confused as I am right now, Abe? A little bit. Yeah, that's I, I feel like I wasn't even on. What did they think about you? You were the knight in shining armor. You were great, right? No, they, 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 I'm telling you what they said. Right. And they thought the interview was fantastic, yeah. but they thought that she was a bit disrespectful to Abe mm -hmm. and that she was out, like, I don't know if outshining is the right word because that's not what they said. Well, that's it was absurd. Like over, but, okay. Like, suppressing the Pharaoh character and, like, kind of overwhelming the Pharaoh character. I didn't um, see that. It's their opinion. Okay. But you they, know what thought, opinions are like, right, they folks? thought all of a sudden she became very real mm -hmm. and very um, very entertaining. It, okay. it, in fact, their comment was it was one of those shows that you would wish would not end oh, okay. because it was good. All right. So, again, feedback is good. Mm -hmm. um, I just personally, I personally really liked her a lot. I right. just really thought she was a good person. Right. And it, and it bothered me that, you know, a man can have sexual relations with someone 
and just because she's a public Philly figure, mm -hmm. humiliate her on every shoot interview. I mean, I almost felt dirty. Is that a, is that a way? What, watching New Jack's uh, yeah. comments? Yeah. Like, I was like, because, you know, at first, when we first got into it, right, we learned, right? We were learning as we went, right? Because, you know, originally we, th we were going to try to build a show just talking wrestling, mm -hmm. and then we were kind of, like, going after a little bit of dirt, mm -hmm. right? Because we are just trying to find our way, trying to find our niche, right? Right. And... I think we've gotten way past that. We don't we don't do that sort of thing. Right. I don't, I don't think. Right. We ask questions. Right. Right. But I don't think we're looking for dirt. Mm -hmm. Um. So it made me feel like it. You know, it's like I don't know how people feel. It's okay to humiliate someone like that. Hmm. My opinion. Can't disagree with it. I don't have any. I wouldn't personally do it, and I don't know why New Jack would have uh, wanted to do it, but uh, he did it. So. So, I decided not to do it last week. I was going to, and then I said it probably wasn't the right time. All right. But last week, you know, two weeks ago, we lost Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk, right? So, I'm going to ask you to listen to a couple of clips with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give my feedback. And I'm asking you, okay. and I'm asking everybody who's watching, either put me in my place. Right. <clears throat> or tell me what you think. Right. Because I got... I got something to say it's going to bother me. So uh, we're on a bother Monty trip okay. right now. All right. right. So put your headset on. I want you to listen. Tell me what you think, okay? Whenever you're ready, buddy. Oh, can't do a show like we did yesterday where we're sharing memories and moments and laughing. And it's, it's a lot more difficult on a day like today when you're talking about somebody you know, a man who, you know, has four children and at the age of 36, it's just a completely different show and such shocking news that came down uh, yesterday afternoon, Tommy. Uh, shocking uh, was the key word for me after this show. I was actually happy a little bit during the show. I uh, lost it towards the end. All right, so you just leave your headset on for a second, Jimmy, because you're going to be. We got a couple of videos to play. Um, so this is busted open. Right. They're clearly talking about Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk. All right. Mm -hmm. So Tommy Dreamer, ex wrestler, Dave LaGreca, who has busted open, which is on Sirius XM radio. Um, I personally, we met LaGreca right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, LaGreca, I think, has done a lot of things for the professional wrestling community. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But overall, not a huge fan of his. Right. All right. You know I'm not a fan of Tommy Dreamer. Right. But pretty <clears throat> pretty simple video, right? No big deal. Yeah. Talking about the passing. Mm -hmm. Want to go to video two there, Abe? I owe everything to him. All right. So this is this is Tommy Dreamer on WWE Network talking about Paul Heyman, right? Okay. So Tommy Dreamer has this uh, great habit of doing the Tommy Dreamer cry, right? Right. He breaks down and cries. Okay. Now, okay he could be an over an emotional guy, whatever. It's all good, right? right? All fine. Right. You know, uh, I think in that particular clip, he was talking about how Paul Heyman screwed him over, but he realized that even being angry that if it wasn't for Paul Heyman, he would not have been where he was. Right. Legitimate yeah. decision. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Abe. If there was ever a person who deserved two tribute days, it would be Terry Funk. Um, and I want everybody to enjoy Wembley. And one day I'll tell you the story of how Tony Khan almost had me and Terry Funk for one last moment with Eddie Kingston and John Moxley. And he did that because he was a wrestling fan. And it was happening, except Terry couldn't get on a plane. And we tried so hard. So everybody, please enjoy Wembley because Terry Funk loved this industry and he loved this business and he loved all of you. You have no clue how many times he told me to tell hello to you and he missed you and he missed performing in front of you. So, All right, so clearly, Tommy Dreamer, <laughs> don't give me the face. Hold on. You bought that? Well... This is not the he creams you cries a lot. Had to know I would react this way, but we're not we're that. not home yet. So I'm ready to go home. I, I know you are, but go ahead. Dreamer, 
Yeah. Relationship with Terry Funk actually yeah. claims Terry is the one that built his great illustrious career, right. which I think Tommy Dreamer must be high ninety five percent of the time. I think I recently heard him say, Could very well "If be. that ECW had the money behind them, they would have defeated the WWE." <laughs> which is like, what do you think? Yeah, come on, uh, guy. okay, get realistic. Yeah, that's but not realistic. Again. Yeah. Who am I to judge, right? He did have a relationship with Terry Funk. Mm -hmm. We saw Terry Reynolds get upset over Terry Funk. Right. I totally get it. Right. All right? Who am I to make that judgment? You know who we're going to ask who had a real relationship with Terry Funk when he gets here? Manny Fernandez. Absolutely. That's a guy that I will listen to when it comes to the memories of Terry Funk. Absolutely. Okay. All right, let's play this last clip. Go ahead. TV screen. We're never going to see the Wyatt family. Like... And then I just hurt so much for his family. 36 years old, Tommy. It's so young, you know. And, know. You know, we're both fathers. And, and they, what they must be going through, that, you know, they lose their father. It's so heartbreaking. I know, but it's so hard, it's, uh, man. It's um, so hard. 36 is so young. Oh, it's so devastating. Oh, it's all right, so hold on. I just want to start this, and we'll have a quick con well, I still got to keep you showing my head. No, you're done. Hold so on. I, just, I want to do this. Sorry, I sorry. want to do this first. I want yeah. to do this first. Go ahead. <laughs> I will be back with a quick commercial break after this <laughs> second. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> so it's like, let me ask you this. Yeah, we're mean. I yeah, want to understand this. I got so it. So he's crying for Bray Wyatt. Right. Right? Right. Okay. Bray Wyatt, who he didn't know. Right. But in the meantime, maybe a month before, we lost Mike Mantor. Right. Which they literally gave two minutes to. Right. Who has a young child. Right. But you didn't cry for him. No. Is this a particular case of LaGreca just, again, being the fucking clown that he always is mm -hmm. with his fraudulent... Listen, mm -hmm. Dave LaGreca is one of the luckiest men in the world. Yep. Okay. He started in a show where no one was into pro wrestling, mm -hmm. and he got it on Sirius XM thanks mm -hmm. to his brother. That's right. Right? That's and right. we all know this. Yep. And pro wrestling is a lot bigger than people think, mm -hmm. and it required five days a week. And the smart thing was when he was with his nobody partner. Right. Right? Because, look, we're nobodies. Okay? Oh, you heard Dutch. You heard him. You heard the man. He went and got, or XM got, Bully Ray, mm -hmm. Tommy Dreamer, mm -hmm. fucking Mark Henry, Mark Henry, mm -hmm. uh, another guy who shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Go ahead, Thunder Rosa. Oh, what a talent! Have and, you heard her uh, sing, Mickey? Ah! Mickey James. So oh, here, God. this clown, yeah. this clown. Oh, he's so mean. Tommy right? Dreamer. So it's mean. like you're I so had to mean. make sure yeah. that I had to make sure me that, that I track? cried. That I cried because. Right. Tommy cried the other day. Right. Now I got to cry. Right. This, I'm sorry, dude. When I heard this, it reeked of disingenuine. It was disingenuous. To me, it reeked of it. It reeked, it smelled like a performance. Now, if that's how you really sound, Mr. LaGreca, when you cry and everything, if that's how you really sound, that's great. But that was a terrible Stan Laurel impression, quite honestly. That was awful. I actually, I'm mean. I actually respect New Jack We're mean. more mm -hmm. than LaGreca. Right. New Jack at least had true emotions right. behind what he said about Terry Reynolds. Whether it was right or wrong, I think right. it was wrong. Right. Fraudulent mm -hmm. and annoying, and it made me effing angry, Jimmy. Does it piss you underneath the surface that he probably knows that if he sniffles about... Our good buddy Mike, who passed away, Mantar, that it's not going to get him any attention. But if he sniffles about Bray Wyatt, it's going to get him a lot of, of attention. Of course! Well, then I think that you have a thousand percent legitimacy for being annoyed at him! How's that? That good? That you work for you? On your own. Don't make me cry. If you say on, no, I'll on cry. On Dave LaGreca's own, yeah. he pretty much said, yeah. Mike Mantor, you mean nothing. Right. And Bray Wyatt, right. you mean everything. You do know what a mark is, don't you? I know you don't like the word, but guess what? Guess what that's being? I guess what that's being? That's being a fucking mark. Your life didn't matter because you weren't famous, but your life does snivel, snivel, snivel. You mark. 
Again, guy was a real dude. If you knew somebody, yeah. if you knew Bray Wyatt, mm-hmm. and you were close with him, like Tommy Dreamer, right. I understand it. Sure. Okay? I or, understand think about Tommy. No, the, other, the other hand is, too, Jimmy, you know? it could be like, you know, Bray Wyatt meant so much to me in the industry, I want to cry for him because he entertained me so much. Right. Literally two months before, they were saying how his character sucked. Right. And on top of it, what is this? I'll never see the Wyatt family again. The Wyatt family hasn't been on television in close to how many years now? Yeah. We saw other incantations of Bray. We didn't see the Wyatt family. I just don't. I don't know. I, dude, being technical I now, just but. don't like it. I don't like it at right. all. I hate the fake crap that goes on in this industry. Mm-hmm. You have enough of it with the wrestlers. Right. You have enough. But now you got it with guys that have a platform that's heard by right. millions, right? right? Or whatever the hell it is. Right. Hey, Not listen, millions, if people but... want to choose to tune into that, that's their call. But I don't really think you get much of the real deal. And by the way, you said LaGreca ponied off his brother. His brother ponied off Michael K. Okay? Sure. In case the other Lagreca has got a problem while we're at it. Right. How's that sound? And there's no you know? wonder that he went through four wives because guess what? He went you're through a fraud. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Whatever that's he right. did. That's three right. wives, four wives. That's right. Because you're a fraud, dude. You know you're what? A fraud. We'll never see the first three versions of the Lagreca family do you, again. Do you know that clip to me? <laughs> that's, 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 that clip to me yeah. washed away all the good things that guy has done for pro wrestling. What, like steal line after line off of me? Well, besides that. Which is, by the way, guys, which is true, That's, I will tell you, there's, there's many cases. Give me a break, bro. This isn't us trying to get attention. This is no. me legitimately <laughs> going. We have enough attention you're on our own. A, you're a effing asshole, dude. Good for you. You're an embarrassment. Good for you. You're an embarrassment. Forget about for wrestling. You. And I you're can't an embarrassment you. as a human being. I, you're a human shit stain. Don't, and don't you see at the end of the day, he still makes it about himself. Oh, we almost had Terry Funk and LaGreca in a match together. Oh, my God, like I give a shit. Well, it was Terry Funk and LeGrand. No, sorry, Terry Funk and San Tommy Dreamer. I'm saying that he was going to be involved in it. Oh, what a boy. The world really missed out there, didn't they? You know? He had to throw himself into it. What a joke. What Uh, a joke. Nothing like meism. It's quite the disease, meism. But... uh, it's going quite. A, it's going around quite a bit. It's 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 almost enough to say, I yeah. had it. Yeah, I wouldn't right. blame you, man. I wouldn't blame you. Upcoming shows. Yeah, what do we got? September fifteenth. Terry's real friend. September fifteenth, we've got Manny Fernandez. Terry's real friend. That's uh, right. I there believe at six p.m. Uh-huh. live and in studio. Jimmy will be here in studio with us. Yes. yes September fifteenth, yes. right after that, seven thirty. We've got the former star of the Young Rock. He's been on the show Very before. Cool. Yeah, he was cool. But Brett Azar will be here in studio. Mm-hmm. Have a mm-hmm. lot to discuss with him on that same date. Cool. And then on Sunday, September seventeenth, Barry Windham returns. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's at 4 o'clock, but there may be a time change on that. But there'll be okay. a lot to talk about. Okay. Um, Barry's gone through a lot these last right. couple of years. Right. And for me, he's one of my top favorite stars. I know he is. I Jimmy he will is. be going to Florida. And by that time, hopefully he'll be getting set up for the show, getting him a mic and a camera so we can do the show from Florida and New York. Mm-hmm. But he will not be in studio for September 29th when we have Pia News, who's a uh, Mike Mantor's best friend. Mantor's yeah. best friend. Best friend yeah. um, we mm-hmm. have Doink the Clown will be in here. All right. We've got uh, Duke the Dumpster okay. will also be in here on September 29th. Very good. Um, and then on September 12th, we've got Paul London. Very good. Very along good. with cheerleader Melissa. All righty. All right, I'd like to thank the band that sings the theme song for Monty Nefaro and Jimmy Farrell, along with his partner, Bart, Bart Griggs, make up the band Wisteria Hall. Wisteria Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. You can find their music on the Wisteria Hall YouTube page. What would you do with that, Jimmy? You like and subscribe, and then you switch on over to the MMP channel, and like, subscribe, and most importantly, don't touch your member. Become a member. Download their music on Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music, and Reverb Nation. Yes, sir. Monty Nefaro, if you didn't know, you are watching Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Got your son the Monty Nefaro YouTube page, the Monty Nefaro Facebook Live page. Hear us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor. Catch us on the Monty Nefaro Twitch TV page. And if you're lucky enough to live in New York, catch us on Channel 115 every Tuesday at 9.30. And Saturday at 11.30 a.m. And Channel 20 on 
Wednesdays Very at good. 7 p.m. There might be some time changes with the new schedule as All being right. their number one show where over 150,000 people watch us weekly. We're also part of the new intuitive network where you can watch documentaries and you can watch movies and you can watch music videos and more importantly you can watch long island's number one pro wrestling broadcast and the world's number one pro wrestling broadcast why is that jimmy because jim beam said so what and where can you watch it on intuitive i am two i t i v e great network good shows on there um we're very excited to be part of this wonderful. So, do they think the Farrell network. got his, uh, you know, his flair back after? Uh, wow, that's bothering you. I think you're misunderstanding what they're saying. They felt. I don't want to re-explore what they. No, felt. but I think you. You, you don't have want to me to say what I, I think. think. I think okay. what they're saying. Well, say what you think. Go ahead. No, you don't want me to do Why not? that because because we're in a business relationship with them. So personally, so it angers what you said. Then you're not I, happy with it. You ever hear that uh, Nunya? You know who Nunya is? Last name business. But see, Nunya sometimes business? Jimmy, you do get <laughs> caught up in things that are said to you, like when Terry called you a woman. Jokingly, oh no! I thought she was right. My hair's nicer than hers. You so. recover, you, but you yeah. see, there you go again. My hair is you nicer your, than hers. Your, it upsets you. It upset I her think, that my hair was I nicer think, than I hers. I think the owners intuitive recognized you as being the star of the show and felt that they would. She was taking your shine away. Oh. That's what I think they're trying to relay, oh, and well. that they felt that she should have known that she shouldn't overshadow Don't the fuck star with the host, of the though. show. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's different. But are they going to call the boys to take care of us? Personally, I think that the guests on the couch should always be the star of the show. That, that's what it is. That's what I would think. But. Well, it depends. Have you seen some of the, uh, you know, what about that guy who came in and thought it was 1995, D.C. Drake? There you go, ripping one of our guests apart. Don't you remember that? He wouldn't I get think, out of 1995. I, I think you call that the worst interview we've ever had. I think you shouldn't reveal what I tell you behind closed doors. <laughs> that but was hey, there horrible. you go again. That was horrible. He was stuck in 1995. I thought he... And that's not the first time I we've made fun of him he, live on the air, I by the way. I thought he wasn't tonight. the type of interview Monty Nefaro liked Yeah, I think you might be onto something. I think Monty Nefaro liked realism. We like to have real discussions, and we don't right. want to sit there and talk about wrestling mumbo-jumbo. We want to talk about radio hosts <laughs> that cry fakely <laughs> because they think that people will feel bad for them so they can sell more 8x10s. Right. That's what I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Anyway, we'll be right back with, with something a little different where we're going to go over the best rock singers in band's lead vocal legends the billboard top 50 yeah check out this clueless list after we come back sir ah manscape uh-huh uh you know have you tried the new equipment that's been sent? I'm afraid because it says weed whacker. <laughs> I'm scared. Maven, Manscaped. What are you thinking about Love Manscaped, it. dude? Love, Love it. it. What do you use it for? Necessity. <laughs> what don't I use it for? Put it this way. <laughs> the only hair <laughs> I have on my entire body is these eyebrows. Yeah. That oh. you see. These wow. caterpillars racing to the middle of my nose. That's it. <laughs> that is it. That's all, that's all I have. And that's all I want. That's the So pick. Manscaped. There's a must. We were talking before the show. There's nothing worse than just hair. Yeah. Right? Hair on a woman, hair on a man. It's just bad. Absolutely. And it's the one thing that the older I get, it starts growing more in unwanted areas. Absolutely. I hate it. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh oh. Just going to go out there. Oh, boy. Go for it. You're doing a deed. Yes. <laughs> Again, I don't want you to have to admit this because we. As men, we try not to admit this, but if you're going to oh, go do the deed it. on a woman, I know would you rather have her be hairless or a little hair, racing stripe, or <laughs> racing stripe. full retro bush? <laughs> racing well, stripe. Retro bush is out. Yes, thank you. Retro bush is out. Yeah. Um, I don't mind a small, well-manicured landing strip. <laughs> Every now and then, if it's completely, and I'm talking like baby's ass bald, Mm. Then I, I start, where is that pedophilia line yeah. that I'm, that I'm, I don't, I don't wow. want to wander into that. That's very interesting. Like that. I never thought about wow. that. You're a smart dude. Oh, yeah. So if the landing strip is clean enough for the plane to go in smoothly, you're cool with that. If the landing strip is, has, like I said, well manicured, yeah. you yeah. can see both sides. It's not like blinking lights on both sides I, of that. Landing? I just don't, I don't want, <laughs> you know, I don't want the shrubbery going off into. Yeah. 
unwanted areas on that gotcha. as well. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, look but, what you found. Ooh. I got to be all honest, gotcha. though. Hey, the, ah. the, the older <laughs> I get, though, I don't, I think, I don't think I can be as... Uh, <laughs> I, I found it! Have, I found have it! Have you ever gone down there and, like, just, like, you, she slowly brings down the underwear, then... What is... Retro. Just Absolutely. Retro. You're like, whoa! Wow, like yeah, a 46. Like it pops out? Do you, like, walk out, or what do you do? No, I, try, I muster through. I muster up the courage to get through. He's a trooper. Yeah. He's a trooper. <laughs> Gotta give him an yeah, not all Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, I, there you no, go. I hear you. Uh, <laughs> there you listen, go. Can't, I couldn't... I couldn't Super say, Bush! I couldn't say... Well... <laughs> If you have the same beliefs as Maven, does Manscaped could help you? Absolutely. The weed whacker. Absolutely. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I may have to, like, you know, go in a room, close the door, and hang out with the weed whacker for a little while. Yeah, I think you're a retro guy, aren't you? I like 70s adult films, if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but with that, Ron we're going to take a quick Batman. commercial break and be anyway. back with this wrestling icon, Maven. We will see you in a drop kick second. A uh, drop kick. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty DeFaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV. Couple of comments before we get into this top fifty, Jimmy. Yeah, I know this top fifty's got you a little perturbed, so it'd be interesting to hear what you say. It's been there Bain kind of weak. says, "I like to see Randy Hogan on again. He's finally in some shape as Hulk Hogan after Hulk leaned out. It would be a great match." LOL. Okay, Randy's cool. Matthew Holland says, Uncle Dan's birthday is coming September 21st. Did he die right before his birthday? I don't remember. Mm. I got to be honest, I don't remember. Luce says, Jimmy and Terry sitting in a tree. P-I-S-S-I-N-G. Pissing? Yeah, pissing. That's not right. Uh, well, Phil, Phil right. Desessere says, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Quote, Eleanor Roosevelt. Very nice. I like Eleanor that. Roosevelt was awesome. Well done, Phil. R.J. Hudson, this is great. You guys deserve an Oscar. Wow, thank you. And here we go. A little something different for you guys. Coming off of last week's wrestling interview. So mm -hmm. we're going to start with number 50. So we'll try to go move as Billboard's fast as Billboard's 50 greatest rock, right. rock singers of all time. Zach De La Rocha. Rage Against the Machine, number 50. Uh, I really have no, not much of a comment on Thoughts that. Thoughts on his singing ability no, and just Rage fine. Against the Machine. Uh, Rage, very unique, Are very different. Are you a fan of Rage? Not particularly, but I see why they would be, you know, somewhere I always think about possibly you with, on with, this list. With the grunge movement. Yeah. Your, you, you coming out of the heavy metal part of it, what were your thoughts? Uh, my transition was, as, as a kid in the 70s, into classic rock. Not, it wasn't classic yet, because it was still happening. But basically, I uh, got into the Beatles, got into Kiss. Heavy metal turns the corner in the 80s. It's heavy metal. Guns N' Roses, which Slash shows up, and I'm excited because I feel like rock is back. And it kind of was because it opened the door to that fancy term we call grunge, which is really rock. That's really what those bands were. They rocked. So, uh, yeah, totally into it. I, was, I welcomed the Kurt Cobains with open arms. Now, I want to be, be fair here because yeah. there's some bands I never even heard of right. that I tried to listen to. Mm -hmm. And, and I, by the way, I think that that should be one of the requirements to be one of the 50 greatest singers of all time. I should know who the hell they are! Yeah, but you got to be should fair. Should be a household <laughs> name of some kind! Here's the problem. When Stop you, it! Get to our because age, in this case, I'm on this list. When you get to Wait our a minute, age, am I on this list? No, you're not. Why not? Uh, I should I, be. I tried. I no tried. one can make you feel inferior unless you allow I, them. I tried to be your advocate. You were just an advocate? And Billboard said you were outshined. Did you cry Reynolds. like LaGreca? It would have gotten me on that. You're a dick. You, you should have cried like a baby. I Why tried. do I have to call you a dick every I was week? At, Why do you I'm do this? I'm trying to be fair. Right. So, anyway, my point is, Jimmy, that you we don't know if we don't... You can feel inferior unless I let you. There you go. Elmer what do you think Roosevelt. of that? Elmer Roosevelt. What do you think of that, Stop being big so guy. loquacious and let me get Stop my shit Stop being so voracious and vivacious. You and are stop vivacious. pissing out of a tree. Yeah. And start kissing yeah. in a tree. No, no, no. I'd rather piss out of that tree. It makes wow. a big splash when it hits the floor. That's hits just the floor. awful. I'm awful. All right, so who's to next? be fair, yeah, to some be of these fair. bands I don't know, so I tried to listen to them so I could give some sort of evaluation. Okay, tell me about Rabbi Aharian from Cafe... Uh, well, that would be Ruben, <laughs> but that's Rabbi? okay. No, okay. Ruben Albran from Cafe Tavaka. Abe, you said you knew a lot of these bands, right? Who the hell is Cafe Talk? You know something? When I see an artsy-fartsy list like this, I want to vomit, Okay. Again, if you're going to go with the 50 greatest rock singers of all time, these better be people we all, we all basically know, all right? Or at least know that they did something underground that influenced all the people we know, okay? This is nonsense. Next. 
Phil Desessere says Miles Kennedy, Mark Legrand, and Miles Corey Kennedy's Glover. Listen, Phil. Miles Kennedy. We're gonna get through amazing. that list. They're, they're, I, I don't know if Miles is on. And if he's not, what a joke. Go ahead. Number forty-eight. Dave Grohl. Oh, I can't argue with Dave Grohl being on the list. I don't know where he would fall in my particular list, but Dave Grohl's great. He's great. Great, great, great. And who thought that the drummer of Nirvana would be this great? That's, that's very a really talented, good point. Very talented band, that Nirvana. Paul Westber Westerberg from The Replacements. I saw The Replacements. I listen. The Replacements are good, dude. I saw The Replacements. And I, I, I cannot say that he should not be on the I'm list. I'm not putting him on the top 50, but I saw The Replacements. They opened up for Keith Richards. Way back in the day. Polly Stream Here we go from again. X-Ray Specs. Abe, X-Ray Specs? Yeah, dude, Talk to me. What do we got here? What What is X-Ray Specs? Pretty sure it's just like an old punk band. Old, an old know, punk band. band. Um, they only had one like hit. You know Johnny I mean? Rotten on this list, if we're going to talk old punk bands, noticed, like I Want to Be Anarchy? There's a lot of like, hit wonders on this okay, list. Okay, you know I mean? all right. Corey Glover oh, he's from good. In Living Corey Color. Glover is an excellent vocalist. He so should be on the list. Corey In Living Color. Excellent. Excellent vocalist. Great. Have you ever seen them live? No, but I've watched live concerts of them, and okay. I like them even more live. I've seen he's them. great. I, I saw them open for the Stones how was, way how back. How were they? Fantastic. I'm yeah. a big Living Color guy. That's Always cool, have man. been. I like Living Corey Color. Corey Glover is one of the oh, great great's singers great. of all time. It's great. In, it, in fact, I would tell you, I would almost think he's a little low for this list. Okay, that's fair. But I, that's I'm fine. happy to see him on here. That's fine. That's um, fine. Next up. Jerry Garcia, Grateful Dead. Wonderful vocalist. So, I, so dude, smooth and so touching. Why do I not agree with you on because this? Because he doesn't do it for you. But at least he's famous and we know who we're talking this about. This is true. Okay? This is true. And by the way, not having Bob Weir on this list, if you're going to have Jerry Garcia, you should have Bob Weir. May because, I ask you, you a question? Know, yeah, why, for someone that likes music like you do, mm -hmm. why would you have any interest in the dead? Have you ever heard the song Addicts of My Life? I have heard every Grateful Dead song. Are you song. sure you've heard the song Addicts yes, of My Life? Yes, I have. Okay, well, Jerry Garcia was much deeper than just your peaceful pot-smoking hippie. Uh, incredibly creative. He, he's just an amazing, amazing musician. And I also think that his melodicism as a singer is qu quite underrated. Songs like Addicts of My Life. Pick up either Working Men's Dead or American Beauty and realize what kind of studio musician he was on top of the fact that he was the ultimate jam band. Jared Garcia was limited. See, that's that's the funny thing. When I when I think of the Dead, mm -hmm. I think of them as a garage jam band. They're not, and I almost feel like they are intertwined with pro wrestling. Right? Mm. Um, the Grateful Dead were everybody's dirty, like not everybody's, but this small group. Not sm I don't even want to say <laughs> small because that's small. not fair either. But this <laughs> large group of people who felt Very that that, group. that was their own thing, almost right. like. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my God! Almost like who's the guy that just passed away? What did you say? Almost like Trekkies? No, no, no. That who's the guy who Trekkies? just passed away? I don't know. A lot the, of people the, the died guy this that just weekend. Died. The, 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 a bunch of people died the this Florida week. The Florida guy, the hamburger guy. What fuck, hamburger guy? Come on! Guy? Why, you're not remembering it. You're yelling at me. I don't know who the, the fucking fuck, hamburger guy is. You're the fucking guy musician. Is. Someone help me here. Who's the, guy the just hamburger died. guy? Gary Wright, no, who wrote no. Dreamweaver, who? died. Oh, uh, Jimmy Buffett. Thank you. Thank that you. That the hamburger you. guy? The That's hamburger, your clue? The hamburger song. What has he got to do with a hamburger? Anyway, my whole point. It's Margaritaville, you idiot. Dude, you never heard of the hamburger song? What hamburger song? See, there song. you go. You, see, you, don't, you don't know everything. You know, you know what you need? You need changes in attitudes and changes in latitudes. Hamburger in paradise, dude. You never heard that song? No, and I'm glad I have it. All right, there it you sounds go. awful. What if I like cheeseburgers? They don't come from paradise. Where do they come from? They come from that Thank guy you, who Matthew. shit all over the place. Matthew comes That's up after come. me, Jimmy Buffett. Right. So, like, Jimmy Buffett is like a dirty little secret. Even though it's not little, it's a dirty large secret. I got you. So it's like, you know, everybody loves the dead. Hey, right. I'm going to go travel around and follow the dead around because yeah, yeah. that's my life. Right. Uh, right. Man, man, man. Wow. I'm a deadhead. Look at you. Man, trucking. Look at you picking on deadheads. Fucking losers. All right. Sorry. You're going to follow Rihanna around and, and drink wine. I'd, ra I'd rather hang out with Rihanna. Fuck that shit. I'll see you at the dead here. show. Give me some ass. Hey, man, let's Fuck hang that. out the dead. Oh, Why get out the dead show, everybody? Oh, dude. <laughs> I guess you've never been Let's high on that there. train. Let, uh, you know. High on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Turn that shit off. Wait. Casey Wait! Jones is Hold telling on. you, turn that fucking music off because it sucks. Sugar Magmonte, <laughs> constantly bitching. Smoke some dope and loosen up. Wow. Lift your weights down by 
by the river. <laughs> what we're, the fuck, we're not, dude? We're not passionate about wrestling, but we're passionate about our music. Dude, we're passionate about golf. Let's face no, it. No, I'm more passionate. What did about it intuitive this? say? Oh, I can't anymore. All right, so where where are we next? next? up, Courtney Love. Okay, Cole. okay, folks. Do not. Okay, do folks. not go this way. Here route, we go, folks. Yeah. As I let him totally yeah. take a shit on the don't make record record setting. Grateful Dead, Guinness Book of World's Records. Someone is trying to tell me with a straight face that Courtney Love is a better vocalist than Jerry Garcia. Abe's laughing, I'm laughing, and we're laughing hey, man, at you, even, brother. Abe you know who Jerry Garcia is. Abe, you want to clear him up? You want to clear him up, Abe? Go ahead, tell him, young man. Tell him who Jerry Garcia Abe, is, I man. Sorry, I, I am sorry. Are you going to let him answer? A, go ahead. Go ahead, Abe. Good. Young man, tell him what Jericho series, bro. I am not a huge Grateful Dead fan. I'm not gonna lie. Are, I think it's you a like little. Hole. No, I don't even. know. You had a chubby last like. week. You don't like Hole? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking Thanks. about? Courtney Love deserves to be. Courtney on Love. Courtney Love game sucks. Hole. Game changer. Game changer. Game changer. You, you tell the Greg is riding coattails and Courtney Love is not riding Kurtz, huh? You suck, Courtney Love. Your voice is nails on an. Asshole. You're horrible. Wow. Nails on an asshole. Yeah. How could you even have nails on an asshole? It hurts. It's what are you putting nails, nails in there? Or is it nails? Nails the wrestler? No. no. I hate you, Vince. Nails like a hammer in the asshole? Sure, why or not? Nails, Dude, like I'd, rather, I'd rather hole. have my asshole nailed with a, you know, hammer than listen to Courtney Love. Wow. I don't she like sucks. you. Anymore. Go to fucking Florida. You're I, well, I will, but I can't stand <laughs> Courtney Love. Surge you know? from System of the Down. They're cool. He's different. He's okay, because he's, he's kind of rock and roll. He's really not. He's I weird. like him, because he's rock and roll. Not really. Because I, really I, I like only defend band. rock and rollers. He's not. I really don't like System of a Down. Yeah, it's, it's, a, you but, got, it's a taste. Right. I don't mind it. It's okay. It's not my top thing. Right. Good singer. It's okay. Different. You go to Florida. <laughs> Liam. <laughs> <laughs> wish I could. I uh, Liam Gallagher, Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> this is hey, awesome. look. Just, this is just, just being honest. This is just, you really wish you could. Oh, I do. It's rough, dude. Yeah, you don't wow. even know. Well, you can always visit. Got a nice pool and everybody into the pool. Jimmy, if I'm going to go to Florida, I ain't going to see me, you. Huh? No, I ain't going to see well, you. Oh, you've seen me enough, I guess. I, I'll, yeah, I'll see you I've enough on, a, I see you on the computer. Right, you can even watch me on replay. That's you know, it. you can catch me on cable. What, what are we dude, on? I'm not even thinking I might even, I'll just put like a body frame in here. And, you might as well. You and did I have a recording. It's not like you haven't done it before. I have done it before. It's not like you haven't done it before. <laughs> you <laughs> must perform! <laughs> oh, I'm not going to be there. Okay, I'll just put a fucking, I'll put a cardboard. That was great that time, remember? Yeah, that was hilarious. I think I came in and hit everybody with a crowbar. That was good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, Liam Gallagher. Wait a uh, minute, hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Do you, hey, with Jimmy, with Jimmy going to Florida, and I'm going to ask everybody out there too. Oh, come on. How long do you think it will take for Jimmy goes, I got to come back to be live in studio okay, that's again? Not, what, you mean to visit? That's different. No, to stay permanently. Nope, that ain't happening. What are you thinking, Abe? Give me your, give me your bets. What's the Vegas odds? That's not happening, folks. Anyway. What's the Vegas odds? I would say, You're putting odds know, on my man. personal life right now? How about I I'm fucking put you through this fucking table? I'm How about that? I'm asking a question. Uh, yeah, which is none your business. You ever hear that? People can give odds. There's nothing they wrong give with odds. that. I think you're odd. How's that sound? <laughs> Unbelievable. Abe, right. hey, I'll Liam, send you a postcard. Liam How's that Gallagher, sound? Oasis. Yeah, he's good. So he deserves to be on the list. I, maybe I would have to think about it, but... Yeah, okay. I'm All not, right. I'm not so up in arms this about it. This person I looked up and listened to the music, mm -hmm. it's pretty. It's not bad. Brittany Howard, Alabama Shakes. I have no comment. I don't even know what it is. I would tell you I think you would like it. Okay. What is it? Is it country rock? Um, what is it? More like punkish. Alabama Shakes? Yeah. So? Okay. Punkish. All right. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. The problem I have is, like, there would be other people I would put in front of this, but right. you know what I mean? Paul McCartney, the Beatles. Okay, this next. is an absolute ass clownery of a fucking list. Okay, Paul McCartney needs to be in the top five greatest rock vocalists in the history of this business. And you have wait, wait, Courtney. This... Wait a minute! You have Courtney Love a whole three spots behind Paul McCartney. Whose drugs are you taking? Can I? Can this I? Is can an I, embarrassment. And I, listen, Phil, I'm, help me out out I'm, there, Phil. I'm accessory. A I need fan. Phil accessory. This is a joke. Paul I, McCartney at the bottom of the top 50 list, only three slots ahead of Courtney Phil Love. Phil says Alabama get away. Oh, thank you. That's Jerry, by the way. Phil says Jimmy will get addicted to the sunshine. 
Uh, I feel I already wrong am. about that, bro. Nope, I already am. The guy's a fucking vampire. I am, but I'm still loving it. Go ahead. <laughs> you hate the fact that I love it, don't you? You don't love it. Yes, you sir. think you love okay. it. We'll see. Well, I keep trying to think, and now finally I, something's listen, happening. Listen, I want you to go. I just don't well, think you, you I don't publicly. think I don't think you're going to love you the know. sunshine. Th- going to Florida and being with someone you care about wait a minute, wait has wait nothing a minute. to do with loving the I'm sunshine. I'm going to walk out in the morning going to go sunshine on my boner makes me chubby. How you doing, Abe? You chubby? <laughs> What's next? Iggy Pop is ahead. Wait a uh, you know, I have to ask you this question. Oh, and I love the Beatles as much yeah. as you do. Mm-hmm. You but know. Paul McCartney didn't have the greatest range. Are you kidding me? Come on. Are you oh, absolutely kidding me? Come on. Phil, somebody out there with Holy somebody who's intelligent. Cow, Phil, you got to help me out here. You're going to tell me, oh, darling, hey, whoever, whoever thinks that Paul McCartney didn't have a fucking powerful upper range, try to sing, oh, darling, see what happens to you. And Iggy, then you'll be at the dock, Iggy, you'll be at the Iggy Pop next, I could understand Yeah, oh, why. sure, Iggy Pop above Paul McCartney. Yeah, I can understand that if I took bad brown acid. Gwen Stefani, no doubt. Oh, yeah, above Paul McCartney, if I took bad now brown Now, you're going to tell me that Paul McCartney has a larger range than Gwen Stefani? I don't give a shit about your range. Are we talking about who's a greater, more impactful singer and composer? Okay, this so is an again, insulting conversation. If, you're putting, if, it, if it was composer, it's this is rock singer, right? Right, and what are you singing? What you composed? How's that sound? Well, you can't okay. compare Beatles music to Why no not? Because music. great is great and sucks sucks. Oh, I got you. Okay, I'll tell you. that's fair. That's Joe fair. Strum of The Clash. He's cool. It's not better than Paul McCartney. Not a great vocalist either. It's not better than Paul McCartney. It's not a great You're vocalist. You're tell me Joey Strummer has a greater voice I don't think Paul Joey McCartney? Strummer should even be on his list. Why is that? Because he sucks as a singer. This is not kosher. He's terrible. That wasn't kosher. Fact, he's terrible. And, and you loved him. You thought he was great. Great band. Right. You know, me, being a great band and loving right. music doesn't mean that the guy in front is a good amazing. singer. amazing. Yeah. See Bob Dylan. I love See, Bob Dylan. See uh, fucking... What's his name? I don't See know. See how they run... Grace Slick, Jefferson Airplane, next up. Ah, uh, she's fantastic. Fantastic. Good voice. Yes. Deserves to be on the Excellent. list. Excellent. Excellent. Chester Bennington, Lincoln Absolutely. Park. Absolutely. Totally agree. Chester's fantastic. This guy, I didn't get a chance to check out. Gustavo Sarita, Soda Stereo. Abe, any help? Soda Stereo? Right. One of the 50 greatest rock singers in the history of the universe. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. Phil says, Beatles, Wings, come on. Yeah, we're Phil, not help me saying out here, bands, Phil. Phil. No, you were saying range. Paul McCartney's range is insane. It's, no, it's not insane. He's Helter a good Skelter. singer. Oh yeah, he's Where's a it? good singer. Go ahead, sing Helter Skelter. <laughs> you, am I saying I'm a good singer? No, no but so, I, want, I want you to to attempt it. Go ahead. I mean, ridiculous. When I get to the bottom, I go. But you got to keep going higher and higher until you scream your brains Helter out. Helter Skelter's not one of the hardest songs to sing. Helter Skelter's not an easy song to sing, my it's friend. Not hard. It's not. It's not an easy song to sing. Phil's talking about Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell is the greatest. I honestly All right, next Chris up, Cornell. Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy's amazing, especially during the Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath era. The, the, <sighs> the, the, the two records that occurred during albums five and six of the Sabbath original. Yeah, one. all right. Oh, I'm, my I'm, God. You Sabbath, know what? Bloody Sometimes Sabbath, I feel like right Ozzy. Right at the end of the song, yeah, Sabbath, right. Bloody you're Sabbath. Right. Are you serious? Oh Sometimes my God. I think Ozzy isn't a good singer, but then I realized Ozzy's back amazing. in the early Black Sabbath Ozzy's days, amazing. and even when he went solo. Crazy Train, he's great. Yeah, he's on, got He's a great you know. vocalist. But then again, how much was that studio enhancement? No, Ozzy sounds like Ozzy. I've seen him live a million times. Ozzy's Ozzy. That's his voice. All right, Laura Jane Grace against me. Abe, again, didn't have help? a chance to check that. Any help? Men's and men's, right? One of the greatest of all time, though, right? Like this Paul list. Yeah, you know. Oh, she's b- way better than Paul McCartney. What a joke. Steve Perry, Journey. Uh, he's fantastic. Steve Perry's great. Should be, I think he should be. He could be higher on much this higher. list. Yeah, Steve Perry's one of the Ann one of the Wilson. Oh, Hart. she's unbelievable. Now, Ann she Wilson. should be higher. Ann, Ann Wilson, one Wilson's of the greatest incredible. singers of all time. I agree. Anthony Kiedis, Red Hot Chili Peppers. <gasps> Take me to the place I love. Again. Take me all the way. Love the chili he's just peppers. There. Yeah. He's just there. He's not, he should he not has, be on this list. Dude. But he has, he's a great composer. He's a great front man. He's a great composer, too. See, the I notes think, that he selects to sing are fantastic. I don't know the criteria behind this because they don't tell yeah. it to you, but I think right. being a great front man has to be part of this. I because would hope. I can't imagine that. When we get to the final, we really realize. So right. it's like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. was McCartney a great front man in concert? Like, was he a the, sat? Was the, he an Ozzy Osbourne? The, the Beatles weren't about a front man. Yeah, they right. were about a band. I got gotcha. you. So it's different. So maybe that's why he's 
low, higher on the list. That's because, stupid, though. Because I, I'm guessing. Yeah, you know, this list is a, bit uh, of a joke. Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground. Lou Reed sucks. Does not deserve to be on this list. Lou Reed sucks. I personally think okay, Louis sucks. Thank I mean, you for, for does, you know, thank like, you for collaborating like with having, Metallica and ruining like me having, completely. It's like having George Thorogood, right? Yeah, and when I hear Lou Reed talk about the Beatles, I say Lou Reed sucks even more. You suck, Lou Reed. Tom York, Radiohead. Okay, deserves to be on this list. I'm, I'm, Radiohead I'm not deserves to be on the list. I'm not objecting. I know you're going to agree with this, Here's and I agree with it Here too. Here comes my girl, Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin is a legend. Fantastic. Fantastic. Greatest female singer. We had that argument, Madonna, Janis Joplin. Oh, that's, that's just a dumb argument, but that's just my opinion. No. It's not even close as far as vocalists go. Uh, hmm. Who do we got next? Rob Halford, you, Judas Priest. I love that he's on the list and he deserves to be on the list, but if I don't see Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden somewhere on this list, I'm going to have a huge issue. But that's, I don't think he's going to be on this list. So you cannot have bacon without the eggs. That's stupid. But I'm glad Karen Rob's on O, it. the yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, Abe, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. I agree with that. I don't know shit good, about the good yeah, band. yeah, yeah. Good band. I've heard of them before. One of the 50 greatest of all time, huh, Abe? Well, I mean... I don't see Ronnie Van Zandt from Leonard Skinner on this list, but you're going to tell me That's Karen funny. from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. I think is Bane on... was just asking about that. Go ahead. Maria Davis is Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa's awesome. <laughs> Doesn't be on this list. Frank Watch is... out where the Huskies go. Don't you Stop. eat that yellow snow. <laughs> Frank Zappa is one of my favorite artists of all time. Right. I think he's, like, one of the most versatile now, artists ever. I am no be a... You know who should be on this list? He be on the list for singers. Okay. Like, this... he's not a great singer. He's a great guitarist. Who right. should be on this list should be Warren Zebon, actually. Ah, ooh. The, that alone. Monty of London. Werewolf. Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam. I love Ed Vedder. He's, he's effing great. No problem. You got no problem there, right? No, I don't. Then Jimmy's favorite, Jim Morrison from the Doors. Uh, he's ranked way too low. This was the Bing Crosby of the 60s. Uh, no. And he's also the prototype for rebellious lead singer that was copied over and over again for decades. He wrote the template on how to be a troublemaking lead singer. He was an OG. He wrote the book. He was an OG. He wrote the book. I agree. Yep. Uh, Morrison, to me, though, was more of a poet. Oh, absolutely. What a genius. Um, you know, when I look at him, like, again, I really think now that I'm looking at this People list, it has, no, it has, oh, forget about Come it. Come on, man. But it has to do with being a front man because next on the list is David Lee Roth. Well, honestly, if David, it really had to do with being a front man, these two names, Jim Morrison and David Lee Roth, are in the top ten. Yeah, but there's, <laughs> see, now Morrison front should be, men. Morrison should be up, Lee Roth should be back. As a vocalist? As a vocalist. Great front man. Great not voice. a good. In fact, did have a great voice. I though. think he's. I think he was an original rapper. He, he talked through majority of his songs. If you really, we love the band. Come on, Allen Dave, music. give me a break. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, yeah, right. One break. There you go. Come that, on up. Entertaining. Loved it. Oh, what a front man! Oh my God, what a front man! A prototypical front man. My right. lord. Next up. Oh, was here we go again. Oh, Kathleen wait a minute. Kathleen Hanna, Kath bikini. Kill. Kathleen from Bikini Kill ranked above Van Halen and the Doors. Uh, Abe, any comment? Bikini Kill? Or should I just kill this I list know, now? I know Bikini Kill because I'm I'm really into like punk rock, but yeah, I, I don't think I don't yeah, think there's put, like a single punk rock person I would put on this list. You, if I'm being you, completely yeah, honest, you put like, him above uh, Ed Vedder from Pearl Jam. No. Oh, what are we Absolutely doing here? Who's not. the asshole that made this list? I, Seriously. I, this is an artsy fartsy asshole. I do that agree that list. it has to be about frontmen because like right. a lot of I feel like a lot of right. punk rock. Mm -hmm. Singers are either not the, singing or they're just they're not major good. front men. They're yeah. entertainment, right? You know who that deserves to be on this list? this list? Makes so much more sense. You know who deserves you know to be I mean? on this list? Johnny fucking Rotten from the Sex Pistols. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I you're mean, gonna it, put it, anybody, it, you put Johnny Rotten Anarchy in the UK. I mean, that's a guy. But who, even if it is about like front men, then they're yeah. still missing. So right. Many right. People, yeah. And you don't right? have like, Green Day without Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. You really don't. So, yeah. All right, we got Chris Cornell by Song Sound okay, from Soundgarden. Okay, in my opinion, Absolutely. and I know Phil's probably listening out there, in my opinion, if when push comes to shove, I believe that Chris Cornell, rest in peace, is the greatest power rock vocalist ever. As far as his technical ability, not talking about his songs or anything else, which were also great, but as far as range, power, this guy was David Coverdale on roids. He was beyond. Chris Cornell was amazing. Cornell. Um, wow. Great singer. What a voice. Great singer. Um, what a voice. I'm going hungry. Oh, my I don't, God. He starts wailing out like that. It's just wow. Wow. I'm kind of torn. Like, I kind of feel like, yes, he should be 
higher on the list, on but then list oh, the it should be lower on the list. I got you. Michael Stripe, R.E.M. Michael Stipe is a, is a great vocalist. I have no issue with him <clears throat> being on the list. I'm, I'm fine with that. He's also a great composer. The melodies that he yeah. writes and performs Absolutely. is what makes him what he is. I really think this has to do with being a front man, too. I think it's a, a Hold mix. Hold on. Steven Tyler Aerosmith. Tremendous vocalist. All front man stuff aside, and he is one of the great old And he's a great front, front, great front man. Tremendous vocalist. And I, by the way, hate, hate. Aerosmith. Yeah, I hate all the 80s stuff. I agree oh, with you. It's just awful. 70s Aerosmith, killer. 80s, no thank you. Haley Williams, Paramore. Now, hey, I'm not disagreeing with doing this. Doing it again. Who's I, this? Paramore, Paramore is a great band, dude. And she's an incredible singer. Mm -hmm. I agree. And she's I agree a great, with that. she, that's an incredible band. And I, when I saw this on the list, don't know it should be that low, like that high on the right, list. Right, above Chris Cornell, huh? So, right. All so, right, like, gotcha. I feel artsy, like artsy. I feel I could be in the wrong place, but Lists, I could artsy, see farts. I could see today's generation. She's a great singer, man. Right. I, I don't I don't I, I Young guess, Bucks, man. Young voice. Bucks, man. Today's generation way better than your stupid generation. No, dude, all I'm trying Give to say to you is she she has some range. She okay. could kill it. That's cool. She's pretty bad. King Diamond has more range than everybody we've mentioned. King, Thank you. King Diamond. Well, oh, oh King God. Diamond's the man. Merciful oh. fate, baby. Roger Daltrey yeah! to who? Uh, Roger Daltrey, the who? Absolutely, Roger Daltrey wrote the template so we would eventually have, like, the Chris Cornells of the world. That was the first power chest. Roger Daltrey, the power chest. The Robert man. Smith, the cure. Yeah, he's all right. I'm not disagreeing with any of these yeah, right he's now. He's right. He's good. He's all right. This one, look, I know you're a big fan. I'm not a big fan. Axl Rose, Guns N' Roses. Great vocalist, but not my, you know, again, I, could, I can't argue with him hitting the top ten, but... I could also put a bunch of other people in front of him. Axel Rose deserves to be on this list whether you love him or hate no, him. No, he deserves to be on the Can't list. I don't know uh, if he's in my know. top ten. That's all I'm saying. And I don't want to hear no more. Ugh, he's, he's fucking great, man. If I don't hear another Guns N' Roses song for the rest of my life, if, it would if be If I don't soon. ever hear Guns N' Roses doing uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door ever again, I'll be fine. But, you know, I do like a lot of their originals. Bono, you too. What an angel. The voice of an angel. Uh, Bono is one of the great, great, great all-time vocalists in so many different ways. Uh, I, Bono's just I think, incredible. I think more importantly, he's probably one of the great all-time frontmen. He's just great. Yeah. It's just no, but his voice is fa like when he starts bel belting on "Wide Awake." Right. You know when he lets go like that, it's just like oh lord, it's it's actually angelic. I think that Bono is one of the greats. George Clinton, the Funkadelics. Yeah, I'm not arguing with George Clinton. <laughs> This this one I got. Yeah, yeah, you gotta argue with George Clinton. He's badass. Debbie George Debbie Clinton's the man. Debbie yeah. Harry Blondie. When I went on a plane and I had gas. I, I gotta be Shit honest. Shit the whole yeah. plane. Always like Blondie, what? but what? But she's a, it's okay. She's a great front man because at the time By the way, she she's was, the original she's rapper. She's an original. She's the original and rapper. And she's gorgeous rapture. and you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, I yeah. it's I, I guess I can't it's argue. Okay, with it. I guess. David Byrne talking heads. Not a great singer. Again, how on earth is is Paul McCartney at the bottom of a list where David Byrne is at the top? I you know honestly you artsy, the more I'm not, but the more clown. and more I'm Who, looking at this, this David Byrne joke. was a better front man than Paul McCartney. Please, please, please. I think that's what it has to do I'm with. Not even, no, he wasn't, because even when Paul McCartney would just shake his head, everybody would pee themselves. Uh -huh. So no. Wow, it's David Byrne, I'm gonna pee uh -huh. myself! Come on. And then she Same was, as it ever was. She was. Same as it ever was. Right, right, right. And you may find yourself yeah. doing a podcast over find, and over you again. You might find yourself in Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you may say to yourself, this is my beautiful life. Yeah. This is my beautiful That's life. That's right. Kurt Cobain, Nirvana. Oh, boy. I'm so happy. Not a great singer. What? Not a great singer. Excellent singer. You're great anymore. songwriter, good, singer, good voice, excellent singer. good voice, great front man, excellent singer. Not a great Everybody singer. Everybody followed him, and he wrote the not template a for a whole generation. Singer. Come on, dude. He was because a, he was great doesn't make generation. him a great singer. I, I think he's. An, I think he was I a good singer. I think he was good. He was good. Yes, he was really good. And I do think he deserves to be on the list of the of top. Of course, 50. of course. But he doesn't deserve to be this high. And Paul McCartney's no, better. No, but that's what I're trying to say to you. When I when I think of front men, so you're putting back action and all this. Cobain mm -hmm. wasn't, he was an influence. He was like, he was like a Charles Manson, Major. dude, right? 
<laughs> wait, wait. You will wear flannels and like it. <laughs> That's a, you will wear flannels. Wait, wait, wait. The 80s are over. Stop celebrating. There you go. Be depressed like Let me. Let me ruin your life. Mike, Mike, the, Mike, by the way, thinks that Kurt ruined the, the 90s. He did. He showed up with that depression flannel. showed up and destroyed the 80s. Ruined, ruined I was the out 80s. partying, and then I came home right. one day on Saturday Night Live. Here's this band, Nirvana. I said to my girlfriend at the time, which ends up being my wife. Right. I'm like... Eh, we're all fucked. You blame Cobain for... Of course. This fucking guy ruined everything. I love the music. And the bass player couldn't even catch his bass. He had to hit him right in the head. Fucking dude. Remember that? It was you like, remember that one I was where like, he flipped the bass It was like, like you sat there and you watched me like, music has just changed. Yeah, they I loved just it though, man. Yeah, I pulled it. over on the side of the road when I heard Nirvana the first time. I'm like, did I just hear what I just heard? See, it's funny. Guns N' Roses came out about the same time, if I remember. Three years earlier. Okay, that's probably earlier. right. Because I remember a guy brought me a cassette game, Monty, this is your type of And it music. had a slow burn. Appetite came out in 87, but it was the summer of 88, that sweet child of mine right, took off. Right, right. And I was like, eh. Yep. But then I remember, because, you know, you probably, mm -hmm. you're right, because in I the Army was, I remember was it well. Appetite for Destruction. Yep. And 1991. One. 91. When did Cobain come out? Cobain 91. comes out in 91. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. probably right. Kills himself in 94. Robert Plant, Led Zeppelin. Oh, please. Robert Plant is, is just a god. All right, our final two. Mm-hmm. Fleetwood Max, Stevie Nicks. Oh, I love Stevie. She is, by the way, that's my favorite all-time female vocalist is Stevie Nicks. And a great front man. She, she's a great front woman. Well, we'll call him <laughs> front man, right? Yeah, she's she's fantastic. And finally, oh, you know, I'm sorry, number three was uh, the dude from Queen. Oh, for, the dude right. from Queen. Yeah. The greatest, uh, the greatest technical I don't know. I, I didn't copy time, right on the script. honestly, is Freddie Mercury. And finally, number one, yeah. the great Mick Jagger, who's still hanging in there at age 80-something. Have you heard the new something. Stone song? It's no, awesome. I have not. It's really good. It's called Angry. Check it out. It's awesome. Uh, Mick Jagger's a great vocalist. And you know what's weird? People don't really realize how great he is until they try to sing the song Angie. Go ahead, sing that, and then tell me that Mick is not a uh, songbird. Angie, great song. And Mick Jagger's great. Now, however, Bain I have... says the Kansas lead singer. I think there was two oh, of them, Walsh. weren't there? Yeah, there were Joe, two of them, uh, weren't uh, there? Steve Walsh, fantastic. Um, you could also say the Chicago lead singer. Phil yes, Desessere, number Chicago. one, Jimmy Farrow. Oh, thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. That's mighty kind of you. Jason Morning says they left out Elvis. I was just about to say, and you stole my damn thunder. Eddie List. No, but he was, a, he was an individual singer. Doesn't matter. It's the greatest rock vocalist, and he was the first he one. He wasn't the front. It's lead. It's I, I rock lead He's singers. a rock and roll singer. Anyway, for everybody, you've been watching. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you not have John Lennon on that damn list, you watsy fartsy fuck? Take it away, Mike. I God. guess because they think Paul McCartney was the lead, I guess. That's pathetic. I, I agree. Twist and shout. I agree. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how they don't have Hendrix. But I get, Jimmy, man. Are they, are they saying that Jimmy, the Jimmy Hendrix experience wasn't a band? Is that what they're was. trying to say? I thought it was. It was, it was. And where's Ronnie Van Zandt from Leonard Skinner? That's bad, bro. They, they really made it. What I mean, about, you could say your boy from Sticks, Dennis DeYoung. Nah. nah yeah, how about Lou from Foreigner? Ugh. You know, no. Tell me he's not a great singer. He is, but I know that you saw them suck and I stuff just, like I that. I just can't. Anyway, you've been watching Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. This is Monty Nefaro. We want to thank everybody for joining us. Go to the Monty Nefaro YouTube page, Monty Nefaro Facebook Live page. Here's on iHeartRadio, Spank for uh, Spank, Spank, Spanker, Spotify, Anchor. Spanker. Spanker. Catch us Spanker. channel 115 every like Tuesday at 930 and every uh. Saturday at 1130 a.m. And, and channel 20 and every Tuesday at 7, uh, Wednesday, sorry, at 7 p.m. I uh, want to thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week. I mm -hmm. don't know who is on the docket mm -hmm. uh, right now, but, you know, we'll have something. We want to thank you all for joining us, the whole crew. We love you guys. Absolutely. I hope uh, we didn't hurt everybody's feelings talking about music. And uh, Who I want to say uh, fuck Dave LaGreca. Yeah, but I don't think that was very nice what you just said. Uh, uh, Paul McCartney! <laughs> Paul McCartney! <laughs> Let us know on the list! <laughs> ah, you phony Paul McCartney should have been in the top. Anyway, you've been watching Monty the Farrow. We'll see you next week.